Hello, so this is just a video of me explaining how you can use time in Excel. And this is a super niche thing, but it might also be really useful for some of my friends who are having schedule stuff, especially like pupil timetables and things. And there's just a little bit to explain about Excel time and how Excel sees time that might be useful to know. This is a really, really common thing. We have our name of our pupils, the time for their, say, lesson starts in my case, so 8 o'clock, 8.30, etc. And the length of those lessons. And for us to see, uh, for this to be then reflected in those kind of times. And we want to talk about the difference between these two things. Because this is a time and this is a number. Okay. And so you might be kind of wondering, why do we care about this? Um, so we're going to start from square one. And say we want 8 o'clock in the, um, yeah, just 8 o'clock starts. The way we tend to represent this in Excel is just by going 08 dot dot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 08 colon 00. Um, and then that's fine. And we get this kind of thing. But this, if we actually look at it, uh, is actually the number 0 0.333 recurring. And you'll be a little confused about what's actually going on. And this is because what we have to appreciate is that when we typed in 08, colon zero zero the fact that that is then saying um excel treats time with a day being one so if we take one then we'll actually get zero 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 because that is a full day but to show this better if we say we take one and we have 24 hours in a day so we take one divided by 24 then we have this really obscure number but if we put this as a time check it out it's one hour so that means that if we're talking about 8 o'clock, then that would be that, times 8. And we have 8 o'clock, which is what we actually see here. Um, we also notice that it's just, it, even though it shows 0, 8, 0, 0, um, the actual full thing is, is an hour, minute, and seconds. Um, and we can actually change that if you go into the formatting. And if you just click time. Um, you can also do clever things like going into number formatting, going to custom, getting rid of all this, and just going hour, hour, minute, minute, second, seconds. Or you might just want, you know, minute, minute, second, seconds, hour, hour, for whatever reason. Like, I don't know why you'd want that, but it's, you can do it. So one of the things that crops up all the time is this. So this, I want, my start time is 8 o'clock. In fact, just because, uh, does that work? No. Uh just because I prefer to see it this way, we're going to put this into our, our minute minute. And we have a 30 second lesson and we want end of lesson time. And the standard thing is to do this plus this and be really, really confused because I've taken B2 plus C3 and it just gives me exactly the same. That's because what's actually happened is that this is just saying it's 30 and that means it's 30 days, so that's not actually going to help us. And what we actually have to do is convert this 30 into minutes. So if we know that a day is 1, an hour is 24, and there are 60 minutes, that means we take this times this times this to get the magical 1440, which will show up all the time, because if we do this divided by 1440, we get half an hour. That is because this magical number is the number of minutes in an hour. Uh, let's just slightly zoom out a little bit, okay? It's just for us to be aware of. And so 1440 is actually really, really useful to know about. Because what we can do is if we want to know the end of our lesson, we can then go... Uh, you know, yeah, just to granulize this a little more. So length as time, <laughs> which might be a little confusing. But then you can go the end of lesson equals that plus that. Bam. Um, what I typically do instead of doing that is to um, just build that into the same formula. So we just do, you know, end of lesson equals the start of the lesson plus the time is minutes with that value divided by 1440. Et voila, we have the end of our lesson. And what I'll typically do when I'm building a timetable is just have this going to the thing above. So the, the second pupil will start 
when the first pupil finishes. So we'll do that divided by 1440. Uh, so let's get rid of all of this. Okay. So then the next pupil could be like 25 minutes, for example. And then we can just literally copy and paste this formula up. Um, for people who want to do, you know, like if they've got loads and loads of pupils, um, then what you can do uh, with this formula, because if we just click and drag it, we'll get the same bunch of things. You can just do a simple if, if the time above it, so if, well, in this case, if B3 is blank, leave it blank, otherwise do the thing. So now we get more like this. Oh, oh, that's really fun. No, of course it isn't. So that, that's really, really dumb. So that's just, that does actually break it. Um, so what I actually meant was if the length, shall we do that? Are we? Yeah, if the length, if we don't have a length, then we'll leave it blank. So if C4 is blank, then we won't have a time because now it'll only show up if we have the fab. And just for confusion's sake, I'll get rid of this because that doesn't actually do anything. So I might do this kind of thing. Um, so we have a 30 minute lesson, uh, a 15 minute lesson, a 20 minute lesson, a 15 minute lesson, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we could do other things to kind of show or reveal things. But, uh, and then we could have like, you know, a break. <laughs> Who has a break these days? And a break, and that could be 15 minutes and stuff like that. And just, this is just kind of a useful starting point for making timetables. Um, so I don't know how much of this is known. I don't know if this is of any interest whatsoever. But if people would like me to explain it, then just let me know. Um, and yeah, so I hope that helps out and take care of yourselves.